Good morning everyone, it's good to see you all on church service again this morning, God bless you. I'm going to open in prayer and then we'll go straight into our worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Praise, Praise God. God. We're here to bless the Lord this morning, to lift up his name, to give him thanks. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Therefore, I shall rise above discouragement I shall rise above doubt and fear because I have the spirit of love, power and a sound mind. I will declare that I am victorious through Jesus Christ. I shall not dwell or be overcome by sin because his grace abounds. Through my faith in Jesus Christ, I am made righteous. I am healed and delivered by the word of God. I am saved by grace through faith and the peace of God is mine because I am justified by faith. I am set free by the knowledge of the truth, which is the word of God. I will not fear because God is with me. I belong to Christ who has sealed me with his Holy Spirit. Jesus is the first and last who was and is and is to come. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just going to go into a short word of encouragement that God has got your back. God has got Amen. your back. No matter what you're going through, no matter what situations you're facing, God is there. And the, the story I'm going to quickly take you through is from Exodus 14. And we know the story of when the Israelites were in Egypt and they were enslaved for 400 years and then Pharaoh let them go, but then he went after them. And I'll start at verse 10 of Exodus 14. It says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. So if we look at this verse in our circumstance, you know, sometimes you come out of a situation that was really getting you down, maybe somebody's not being nice to you at work, or there's a mm. family situation, whatever it is, and you think it's been dealt with, but then you turn around and that person or that situation is coming at you again and you just begin to feel afraid and scared. 
But, you know, Moses encouraged the people to continue going forward. And verse 11 said, And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. So the Israelites were basically saying to Moses, you should have left us where we were. And sometimes that's how we feel. We think, mm -hmm. well, we were doing all right. You know, there's a bit of problems, but we were better off better where we were. Them. We should have just stayed there rather than move and end up in a worse situation. But Moses encouraged the people in verse 13. He says, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So I just want to encourage you this morning, stand still. Sometimes it's not easy when you're in the midst of a battle, in the midst of fear and anxiety, as Bishop preached last week. But stand still. Do your best just to stand still. Look up to the hills from whence cometh your help and God will fight the battle for you. Verse 17, everything that the Israelites went through, it was to bring honour and glory to God. In verse 17, it says, And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honour upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honour upon Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Amen. So the situation you're going through right now, whatever it may be, it might not be nice, it might feel horrible, but God is allowing it so that he will get the glory. So the enemies will know that God is God, that the God you serve is the great I am Amen. that I am. And the word honour in the Hebrew is kabad, which means glory. So remember, when you're in the midst of your situation, God is allowing it to bring glory to his name. Verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. So initially, when they'd left Egypt, the angel of the law, the pillar of fire and smoke was in front of them. But at this point, God removed it and put it behind them. And that's what God does. You know, when you can see, when you turn around and you can see people or situations and it looks like they're coming after you, God will put himself behind us to cover us, to keep us and to hide us. So it says he removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. So God has moved himself to put himself between us and our enemies. And that cloud will cause our enemies to be in darkness, but it will cause us to be hidden and to Amen. be in the light of God. Amen. Praise God. So don't fear. God has got your back. Your boss might be on your back. Your family might be on your back. Your friends might be chatting about you or doing whatever it is but God has got your back. So as the story goes on, Moses holds up his hand and the sea parts and the Israelites cross the sea and the Egyptians are still pursuing after them. Verse 24, And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. I just want to speak into somebody's life this morning. Amen. God is looking Praise through God. that pillar of smoke he's put behind us and he's about to trouble your enemies and that word trouble means to confuse to bring confusion and to bring destruction on their plans and in verse 25 it continues and he took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so the egyptians said let us flee from the face of israel for the lord fighteth for them against the egyptians so whatever your enemies coming at you with god's about to take the wheels off it whatever it. whatever they are doing god is fighting on your behalf Amen. he's got Praise your back god. he's going to confuse them he's going to destroy them and he's going to bring trouble to their camp mm. so continue to trust in god this morning continue to believe god that god has got your back in jesus name amen, amen. Praise, Praise the lord god. the word that god gave is understanding the power of your words mm -hmm. now you've heard this so many times before but i want to bring a new revelation to you today sister alicia wrote this song i am blessed now when you are saying i am blessed you are declaring that i am blessed regardless of what the doctor said regardless of what anybody else says you are declaring you are blessed and when you speak over yourself it is a powerful thing mm -hmm. it's a powerful thing there was an experiment done 
by many scientists, actually. They cook some rice and they put it in two separate containers. They wrote the words, life and death, upon the two containers. Then they put those two containers in the fridge and every morning for 30 days, was it pastor? Mm -hmm. For 30 days, they took out the container and over the one they wrote death over, they said horrible words like, you're not gonna come to nothing. You're nasty, you're horrible, you're this. And they took out the one with the life on it mm -hmm. and they started to read the scripture or pronounce positive things from the Lord. After 30 days, and scientists are baffled by this, but they said, it's the power of words that the rice that had death written on it and they spoke negative things to it came out all moldy mm -hmm. and it was horrible. But the rice that was life, oh, praise mm -hmm. God. I'm going to talk to you today about speaking life. The rice that had life written on it and was spoke life over it and spoke the scriptures over it came out beautiful. Mm -hmm. To be honest, nothing was wrong with it. But I know some of my friends have tried it when I was telling them, and I said, it actually works. So if that is rice, how much more should we speak life over our family? Mm -hmm. How much more shall we speak life over our children? How much more shall we speak life over ourselves? Because sometimes we speak negative things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the words I want to bring to you today is understanding the power of your words. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible said, in Mark chapter 11, verse 12, that Jesus was going towards Jerusalem. And as he came to Jerusalem, he was hungry. And he saw a fig tree in the far distance. And as he got close to it, he realized there was no figs on the fig tree. And Jesus cursed the fig tree. He spoke a curse over the fig tree. When they was coming back, Peter noticed, says, Jesus, this is the fig tree that you curse. It is dried up from the root. Mm -hmm. Did you know there's life and death in the power of the tongue? In fact, Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Speak positive things. Speak life over yourself. Speak life in your home. In James chapter 3, verse 9, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. God wants us to bless. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 14, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Bless them. Because in blessing them, we're doing something great. Now, I'm going to teach you something here. There's a word magicians use a lot, and it's abracadabra. That's actually a Hebrew word, and it literally means, I will create what I speak. I will create what I speak. So when they're doing their magic trick, they say abracadabra, and then poof, something happens. A, a, a rabbit comes out of a hat. Did you know that you create what you speak? You create what you speak. And I know it's easy, and sometimes we get a slip of the tongue and we say things that we don't want to say. But God is saying, speak life over your children. Amen. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over your situation. Speak life over your sickness. Whatever sickness that you may be going through, whatever sickness that you may be experiencing, speak life. Say that the Bible said that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Weapons will be formed against you. But do you know what, my brother, my sister? It will not prosper. Amen. It will not prosper. You are victorious. Amen. Greater is he, hallelujah, that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And do you know, when people want to put a curse on somebody, they have to speak 
because it comes from the mouth. They have to speak. Those people who spoke over you can stifle your blessing. Mm -hmm. But let me just explain this. When you're in Christ, you cannot be cursed. Amen. Let's make that clear. When you are in Christ, you cannot be cursed. Amen. However, as Christians, we can leave the gate open. Mm -hmm. We can leave the door open. So when people speak into our lives, it seeps into our life. Mm -hmm. But in the name of Jesus today, I say that as long as we are in Christ, as long as we have covered by the precious blood of Jesus, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amen. No curse shall overtake you. Amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The enemy comes in one way, but they leave seven ways. Praise be to God. You shall be a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Let me say to somebody, Amen. you are more than a conqueror. Amen. Are you hearing me? You are more than a conqueror. Sometimes people say things over us. And if we accept it, what can happen? It can hold us back. You may be in a good mood and sometimes somebody may say something that puts you in a bad mood all day. Because words are powerful. Amen. Words can change your atmosphere. Amen. Praise God. But if you don't accept it, and when somebody says you're good for nothing, when somebody says you'll never make it, you can just mutter to yourself, well, the Bible tells me that I am more than a conqueror. So I'm not accepting these words. And you can move forward. The word of God is pure. The word of God is powerful, Amen. sharper than any two-edged sword. So I live by the word of God. I will speak blessing over myself. That's why I love the song that Sister Alicia wrote. I am blessed. Let me tell you something. I am blessed. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Are you blessed? If you are blessed, no person can curse you. Amen. Because who God bless, no man can curse. No wonder when Aaron was the high priest at the time, and God spoke to Aaron and said, when the people are leaving after the service, say to them, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We have peace in the Lord Jesus. Some of you may feel, I don't feel comfortable in my house. I don't feel comfortable here. But you know something? You have the power to stretch your hand over your home Amen. and say, I pray that this home is blessed Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because wherever my feet is, that's where God is. So this house is blessed. Declare that your house is blessed. Amen. Declare that your house is blessed. It is blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And no evil can come near your dwelling. Psalms 1. Verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man and woman that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. See, that's telling you something. That if you're blessed and you keep the door shut, the gate shut, mm -hmm. you are blessed and nobody can stop you. If your delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law of God, the word of God, doth he meditate day and night. Can I show you what the word meditate means? The word meditate is a Hebrew word, hagar, which literally means to utter or to speak. Can you see that? To utter, to speak. Amen. So when you hagar the word, when you mutter the word, when you speak the word, the Bible says if you speak it day and night, this is what's going to happen in verse 3 then he and she shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Praise Amen. God. And whatsoever he or she does shall prosper. Amen. You shall prosper. Oh, I feel prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. You shall prosper. Amen. You shall not be defeated. Amen. You shall prosper. Hallelujah. You shall prosper over every habit. 
Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You shall prosper over every negative word. You shall prosper in your home. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You shall prosper at work. And when we go back to church, we shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And when you go back to work, you shall prosper. Why? Because you're meditating upon the word of God. You see, the world uses a word. And magicians, abracadabra, I will create what I speak. But they understand that. But we should understand it even more. That when we speak the words of life, when we speak what God gives us, the word of God, the word of life, we also shall prosper in everything that we do. Oh, hallelujah. There's a release coming over somebody. Hallelujah. There's a release coming. You are not bound by negative words. Praise God. You shall flourish because you are speaking positive things over yourself. You shall prosper. You shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. You shall be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Your store cupboard shall not go empty. This sickness, hallelujah, that you have is not unto death, but you shall live, hallelujah, and you shall declare that God is God. Speak life, amen, over everything you have. Speak life. The scripture says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Those words will not prosper. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And even if you feel they're prospering, we break them now in Jesus' name. Every negative word, we break them. Why? Because we have the authority. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You see, who God bless, no man can curse. So what that means is that even though people may be speaking negative over you, they cannot prosper Amen. over me. Amen. They cannot prosper over me. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. You're going to come out as pure gold. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No wonder David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Tell yourself from this day, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak life. No matter how angry I get, I'm going to speak life. It's not easy. It's going to take a bit of practice. I'm telling you, it's going to take a bit of practice. But tell yourself, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to come out of this as pure gold. I'm going to speak life over my home, over my family, over my partner, over my work, over my very body. I'm going to speak life. And right now, I speak life over you. Amen. Wherever you are in that room, wherever you are in the house, I speak life Amen. over you. I declare that you shall prosper. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when God blesses, it reaches a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings Amen. and the enemy cannot stop you. I just want you to understand what the Lord is saying to you, God wants you to speak life. Mm -hmm. In your tongue is life and death. You've heard this a million times before, but I'm here to tell you and remind you again. Mm -hmm. Your tongue is life and death. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that you shall be healed, mm -hmm. we declare it. We believe it shall be healed. Just like how Jesus cursed the fig tree. Mm -hmm. And we don't curse man. We curse the works of the enemy. We curse the plans of man, mm -hmm. but we don't curse human beings. Mm -hmm. Christians must not curse the other person, no matter how bad they get. Don't curse them. Curse their plans. Somebody's planning to stop you. Lord, the plans that they have, I rebuke them. Because we have a power to curse mm -hmm. and bless. The Bible says it, but you must bless rather than curse. Mm -hmm. So we don't curse man, but we, we curse the plans of the enemy and we stop their plans and we bless man. In your tongue is life and death. Speak life. Speak life and you will see the fruit of it. Speak life over yourself. Mutter, Hagar. Mm -hmm. If you meditate upon the word of God, that Hebrew word, Hagar. Then you shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Sometimes we can't move forward from where we are in our life because we've spoken over ourselves negative things. Mm -hmm. Come on, speak life. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. 
And if you want to move forward and you're wondering why you can't move forward, maybe look at what you're saying. Are you saying negative things to stop you from going forward? Mm -hmm. Speak life in Jesus' name. Everything he said is so true. You know, we need to begin to speak life over ourselves, over our families, over our relationships, over everything, so that we see the positive results of what God can do in our lives. Praise God. The Lord just dropped something in my spirit. And he said, the words that you've heard over the last week was sent, some of the words that's been sent were sent by the enemy to push you backwards, not forward. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm telling you, God has spoken to my spirit. I picked it up in my spirit. I picked it up in my spirit that the enemy sent out words to bind you and to send you back, to send you back. But you know what? You will not go back Amen. because I declare that you shall go forward. Amen. And those words, I pray in the name of Jesus, those negative words, whoever it came from, from a professional, from a non-professional, from a friend, from a doctor, from a nurse, whoever the words come from, even from a family member, Hallelujah. amen, whoever those words come from and has tried to push you back. Sometimes those, these people, when they're saying the words, they don't realize they, mm. what they're doing. So you can't blame them because we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and those words those negative words shall fall and wither up and dry up in fact i curse those words in the name of jesus and it shall not have no power over you and it shall not have no authority over you in jesus name and the church says amen, amen. praise god amen. hallelujah amen. i just feel the anointing Amen. I don't know who I was talking to, but I just believe that I'm speaking to somebody. If I'm speaking to you, just raise your hand. You don't have to say anything. Just raise your hand if I'm speaking to you. Praise God. Two people, three people. There you go. Four people. That's okay. Do you know something? It's good for confirmation, not for myself, but for other people to see as well. Amen. Whatever words has been gone out all over you to send you backwards. You might feel you're going backwards, but you're not going to go backwards. Amen. You're going to go forward. Amen. You're going to go forward. In fact, the words that God said to, to Moses was NASA, the word NASA, which means lift up and to go forward. When it was crossing over the sea, you're at the sea and you hear negative words, but you're going to go through in the name of Jesus. Fast track. There's going to be a fast track. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're going to have a fast track. They've held you back, but God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you a fast track and bring you even faster than you thought that you was going to be, says the Lord God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Bishop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as Bishop said that, confirms the word I shared this morning. You know, the Israelites said they wanted to go back oh, yes, to Egypt. Right. But That's Moses right. said, no, we're going to go forward. forward. So continue to go forward. Don't even contemplate about going back. Don't go back. That's where the enemy wants you to go. But God wants you to go forward because God has got a blessing already prepared. You just need to walk into it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Hallelujah. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.